Considering just how late I am, I wasn't planning to talk about Sousa getting involved with Red Hat. But I feel like if I don't talk about it, the voices are never going to stop. So let's talk about it. Sousa preserves choice in Enterprise Linux by forking RHEL with a $10 million plus investment. Also the same day, at Sousa, we make choice happen. Now the guy who wrote the blog post, this guy over here, he is the CEO of Sousa. And in the original announcement he says, For decades, collaboration and shared success have been the building blocks of our open source community. We have a responsibility to defend these values. This investment will preserve the flow of innovation for years to come, and ensures that customers and community alike are not subjected to vendor lock-in, and have genuine choice tomorrow as well as today. Becoming more proprietary should not be the basis for competition between open source companies. We have all contributed to the open source community, just as in the same way we have all benefited from it. It's something bigger than the sum of our parts. As such, forking RHEL. SUSE announced it is forking publicly available Red Hat Enterprise Linux RHEL and will develop and maintain a RHEL compatible distribution available to all without restrictions. Over the next few years, SUSE plans to invest more than $10 million into this project. And on the blog post saying, we will build, support, and contribute a hard fork of the RHEL code base to the community. This is what we excel at and it will give long-term compatibility and choice for customers. Now this sounds like a really exciting project, but something about this really does confuse me. It's not entirely clear to me what it means to both be a hard fork of RHEL, yet remain RHEL compatible. If it was one thing or the other, that would make sense. I could easily understand taking RHEL as a baseline and then shifting it into a new direction. That is very clearly a hard fork. I can understand what Rocky Linux is doing, where it's going to be tracking the changes from RHEL, but doing it in a slightly more obfuscated way, maintaining compatibility with RHEL. But doing both at the same time, that seems a little bit odd. However, later statements in the blog post might give a little bit of insight. If you're a mobile phone user, you want the ability to switch telco provider while keeping your number to maximize the value you are consuming. Equally, as an enterprise Linux user, you can switch to SUSE while keeping your existing Linux. At SUSE, we are experts at providing enterprise value to users of open source software in a highly competitive way without compromising what is important to customers. Our team is highly experienced in supporting mixed environments. Last year, we successfully introduced SUSE Liberty Linux for our customers who need CentOS and RHEL support. So that means SUSE, CentOS, and RHEL. Go away with your stupid messaging box. Furthermore, SUSE Manager has been long renowned for its ability to efficiently manage a wide range of Linux distributions, showcasing our dedication to empowering users with flexibility and choice. SUSE is steadfast in its commitment to share this work. We will ensure others have free and open access to the source code and that project will never be restricted. So this is SUSE Liberty Linux. With SUSE Liberty Linux, you get trusted support and optional proven management tools that are optimized for mixed Linux environments, including Red Hat Enterprise Linux, CentOS, and SUSE Linux Enterprise Server. And this takes us into the core of the entire problem. Why would SUSE want a RHEL fork in the first place? I've seen a lot of people online asking exactly that question. SUSE isn't RHEL. SUSE has their own thing. They have SUSE Linux Enterprise Server. This is very much in the commercial enterprise space and is by no means a badly performing project. SUSE is one of the major companies involved in this space alongside Oracle, alongside Red Hat, alongside Canonical, and anyone else who may be involved in it. And it's not like SUSE is just planning to drop support for their other projects. As they say, it goes without saying that SUSE remains fully committed to SUSE Linux Enterprise and adaptable Linux platform solutions, as well as the open SUSE Linux distributions. But them having their own products, SUSE not being a real rebuilder, is exactly why they'd want to build a real fork. So let's go through a bit of an example. 
let's say you are company X and you're competing with company Y. You're in the same space and you're both building a relatively similar product that serves a relatively similar customer base. And even if these systems are completely open, it's not like customers can just move back and forth as they want. While there might not be any direct vendor lock-in, there's some indirect vendor lock-in. The company is very tied to your support structures. Some of the software packages they use are only tested on one system and not the other. Now, what if there was a way for company X to build a system that is compatible with the competitors? Whilst they might not be able to migrate directly to the internal system, they might be able to migrate to your compatible product. But then couldn't people just easily move back and forth between the two companies then? Well, what you also do is build software around having a mixed environment. So these customers are going to start using a mix of your internal system and also the compatible system, which now effectively creates a whole new system, System XY or System Z. Now, what's really unclear is how compatible they're aiming to be, whether it's like Rocky Linux, where they're still going down the route of one-to-one -one compatibility, going through the bug fixes, going through the packages, and trying to make Rocky Linux exactly the same as RHEL, or if they're doing what Alma Linux is now doing, because they realized doing that is going to be really difficult and take a lot of effort. They're sort of backing off a bit. In The Future of Alma Linux is Bright, they describe a new idea. After much discussion, the Alma Linux OS Foundation board today has decided to drop the aim to be one-to-one -one compatible with RHEL. Alma Linux OS will instead aim to be application binary interface compatible. What they mean by this is explained down the bottom. ABI compatibility in our case means to ensure that applications built to run on RHEL or RHEL clones can run without issue on Alma Linux. Adjusting to this expectation removes our need to ensure that everything we release is an exact copy of the source code that you would get with RHEL. Doing that would be incredibly difficult, and this is a much more achievable goal. I would imagine that SUSE is probably going to aim for this. But at least at this stage, and from everything that I've read, they've not said one way or the other. Now, one thing you may be concerned about is couldn't this just become another CentOS situation? You have CentOS being managed by RHEL, and at some point they say, well, the project's over now, goodbye, you CentOS stream, or hey, the other thing's just not going to exist anymore. Well, to address that concern, they are doing things a little bit differently. SUSE is committed to working with the open source community to develop a long-term enduring compatible alternative for RHEL and CentOS users. SUSE plans to contribute this project to an open source foundation, which will provide ongoing free access to alternative source code. What's not clear is one, what this foundation actually is, like who are they, what are their names, which foundation is it going to be, and if it's not an existing foundation and instead is one created by SUSE, what sort of control are they going to have over that foundation? Is it going to be like the Mozilla Foundation, where it is very tightly connected with the Mozilla Corporation? Or is it going to be this standalone thing that SUSE just happens to support? I know which one I hope for, and I'm sure most of you probably agree as well. The second option. This foundation that is disconnected from SUSE, just doing their own thing. And hopefully, hopefully, it stays like that long into the future, and doesn't become another CentOS situation, where SUSE picks it up themselves, maybe RHEL picks it up, which would be kind of hilarious, pay $10 million to build a fork of RHEL, and then RHEL just absorbs it, but let's just hope that doesn't happen. At this stage, the details of how it's going to go down are completely unclear. And even if there were a lot of details, there is a disclaimer at the bottom of the announcement. Any statements in this press release about future expectations, plans, and prospects for the company, including statements containing the words aims, targets, will, believes, anticipates, plans, expects, and similar expressions may constitute forward-looking statements and should be read with caution. 
actual results may differ materially from those indicated by such forward-looking statements as a result of various important factors. You know, various company things and big things that have been happening over the past couple of years. You know exactly what I'm talking about. So until we see a product, until this real fork is complete, everything is just temporary, everything is just this is probably what is going to happen. But what I can say is if this does happen, I am really, really excited. The next couple of years are going to be absolutely crazy in the enterprise space. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to lose any sleep regardless of what happens or doesn't happen. I'm not involved in the enterprise space and many of the people watching this channel probably aren't either. And if you are, you're probably not running a big company. You might be a developer or a system admin or something like that at one of these companies, and that's pretty much your entire interest besides watching the Giants fight. And to be honest, watching the Giants fight is kind of fun. All we need now is for Canonical to step in and for some reason try to make their own real fork. I don't think it's going to happen. I really don't. But I also didn't think that Oracle would come out and say they are the good guys. So anything can happen. Regardless of what happens, I hope you enjoy the show. So if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one over these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, silly bearer, pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and... Canonical, hurry up. I need another article. Hey,